My name is Karen Ivasco, you missed her 2017. I'm a host, a speaker, and an image consultant. I grew up in a family where beauty wasn't so much focused on because in a Chinoy family, it was more of career. So I grew up not knowing that I look good or I can look good. I was just focused on studies, even though that's the kind of tradition I grew up. In time, I was built with the right values. As you grow up, you would understand more of beauty and in the processes or situations that you go through in life. But values being founded in you would be the greatest foundation that your parents can ever give you. And that's how I started. Values and education were the things that were instilled in me as young as it was. I never thought that I have made that impact in my community and I continually want to share my story and encourage other people to do the same in their own journey because we can achieve more together and we can encourage more people to be in the path where they are called and created to be. Watch me on Chinoy TV presents Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart, only on CNN Philippines. Hi, my name is Chris Tan. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm also a life coach and I also act and I dabble in cryptocurrency. So growing up as a Chinoy was a little bit challenging because I had very sinked eyes and uh, I would always be made fun of because my eyes were so small. So I had a little bit of an insecurity about that growing up. I also am very Moreno, so that was a weird mix and people found that very weird and made fun of that in my school. Well, the good thing about me was I never really want to allow anyone to talk down on me or make fun of me. I actually looked at it as a challenge to be accepted, not just by me, but by my peers and to look beyond the physical. This is something that I think is important to be able to get out there so that people understand that Chinois are also Filipinos. And we are more Filipino than we are Chinese, actually, because this is where we grew up. Uh, although we bring our Chinese culture as a part of it, our hearts are still here in the Philippines. Watch me on Chinoy TV presents Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart, only on CNN Philippines. I'm Valerie Tan. I've been a TV and events host for 15 years already. I'm also a content creator. I do lifestyle and travel vlogs. And I'm also an entrepreneur. I'm very fortunate in the fact that my parents are very supportive with my career of choice. Because as a Filipino Chinese, the usual stereotype is you're expected to be a doctor, an accountant, an engineer, and of course, an entrepreneur. But for us, me and my siblings, we all had different career paths and my parents were very, very supportive of each of our choices. So they would bring me to all the auditions and up until I was starting already and struggling to get a project on TV, they were there for me. They were truly 100% supportive and gave me 100% unconditional love and support. I I'm very lucky in that aspect. to be part of this roster, to share my story as a modern Chinoy, and to find representation for their own stories and their own journeys. Catch me on Chinoy TV Presents, Chinese by Blood, Filipino by Art, on CNN Philippines. Hi, I'm Ian Lorenos. Uh, I'm a TV director and a filmmaker. I grew up in a, you can say, typical uh, Chinese-Filipino family. My dad was a merchant in the Visoria and my mom was a housewife. And we all studied in a Chinese-Filipino school. You can say that uh, my family was somehow in between traditional and modern Chinese-Filipino family. Modern in a way that they didn't force us to be the usual, you know, study in a Chinese school, go to a business university or college and then do business. Rather, they just 
you know, instill us that not just to be a businessman, but you know, to be a good human being. I think that was very special to me. You know, living in a community where all stereotypically taught to be business people. My parents taught us the values of uh, helping, taught us the values of uh, you know, good reputation. I'm happy to share uh, my story to all of you and I'm just proud to be here and to represent the Chinois. Watch me on Chinoy TV Presents, Chinese by Blood, Filipino by Heart, only on CNN Philippines. Hi, I'm Rain Smika. I'm a fashion model and I model professionally and internationally. I got into modeling uh, when I was 15. I actually didn't expect to get into modeling. I was rather scouted by a talent agent and when I tried it out, it, I think no one actually knew what was modeling <laughs> in the Chinoy community. Well, I would get comments like, what is she doing? It also made me question myself, what am I doing? <laughs> I was just having fun and learning from the mentors who discovered me in the talent agency and eventually I found a place for myself in this confusing world. I found that modeling actually made me found this group of people where I felt like I belonged to. It's really exciting because I get to share my story to um, everyone, to the Chinoy community, and it allows me to also learn more about myself and inspire others. And I hope a lot more of the Chinois would get into the type of field I did in modeling. Watch me as Chinoy TV presents Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart, only on CNN Philippines. My name is Stan C. I am a sportscaster and a voice talent. So when I was growing up, I was bullied because of my name. I was bullied because I was bookish. I was considered a nerdy kid. And in a way, pag na-color ka na into your little box, hindi na nila ma-i-imagine na you can step out of your box. When I was being bullied, it was really people making me feel bad about myself, making me feel that I shouldn't have any self-confidence, any self-esteem. So it wasn't necessarily about like what I wanted to be or who I am. It was more of who they thought I was. My goal was to reinvent myself. So that's why I wanted to do everything I wanted to do. What I've seen in my career is that a lot of the opportunities that opened up for me was because I put myself out there and I simply asked, even if the opportunity didn't exist. One of the things I really believe in is representation. It's something that I really stood for and wanted to push for. And I'm glad that this season we're expanding beyond coverage of Chinois inside Metro Manila. So it's great that we're hearing all these stories because it adds more diversity and more flavor into the overall picture of what being a Chinoy is. Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart. Hashtag Beyond Borders is brought to you by Doña Maria Brown Rice, My Kind of Rice, from SL Agritech. BA Securities, your trading partner in Asia Pacific. Dash Cargo, propelling possibilities. I think it's very important for a creative to be an entrepreneur. And if you're not an entrepreneur, find someone else who 
understands business. When you look at every successful creative person anywhere, there's always somebody in business behind it. You, know, you can't separate one from the other. If you're an artist, you can get away with it, but not in design. I'm Kenneth Cabonpue, and I'm an industrial designer. I'm Kenneth Kabonpue. Welcome to my showroom. So, these are uh, my classic pieces here. This is the Bloom chair. This is my dog, uh, Rory. And these chairs are uh, made out of uh, Italian microfiber, and they, they they swivel like this. Yeah, this is one of our classics, and of course, it's inspired by a. Uh, flower and uh, the amount of work that goes into this one is like really creating a it's like a wedding gown I think every design of mine really comes from it's a sum any design is a sum of all your experiences and part of them growing up as a child growing up in your family your travels um, it's very hard to determine which inspiration draws from which from where exactly because I think you're really a sum of your experiences and some of your of your culture, how you grew up, you know, and in my case, it was growing up as a Chinoy in the Philippines. My father was a traditional Chinese businessman, and my mother was working always from the house. She was a designer who built furniture literally from our backyard. Every night before going to bed, she would read stories of fairy tales and different stories from faraway lands. And this would make me imagine things. Um, it, it was a very, very creative childhood I had because after I drifted off to sleep with these stories, the next morning would um, find me wanting to recreate these stories using the materials that I found. So you can say that I'm a mixture of both, my, both worlds, both the creative and the pragmatic one. And I guess that's also a reason for uh, succeeding in business. I'm very glad that I grew up, uh, that I had a very Chinese upbringing in that this sense of being uh, pragmatic, um, always using your common sense, you know, was, uh, was taught early on. In school, you know, it was not a normal path to take on a career as a, as a designer or any creative person. Hardly had any art courses at all. So, but I was always very creative. I was designing all the uniforms for basketball, the, the posters for a concert. So I found my outlet there. And when it was time to take up a career in, uh, in the university, my, I really wanted to take up design. You know, I wanted to continue my childhood. But my father said, no, you have better take up business because there's not much money in art and design. And he said, anyway, business is applicable in everything you do. And so that's when I went to UP and I took up business for two years. And right in the middle of my accounting class, I said, I, I can't take this, this is not for me. So I walked over to the fine arts department, got a schedule for the next entrance examination uh, so I sat there that Saturday or Sunday, and there was a drawing exam. And uh, because I didn't have any art course or any background, I didn't know how to draw. So I failed the entrance exam.
This is one of the quirky designs of mine. It's called a babar, and it's actually a working desk. There's a drawer here. Um, all the, the doors here um, open. You can put a printer, paper, books. You have everything right here. I designed this, uh, you know, part of my fantasy of a being marooned on an island with only, you know, an elephant with you. Actually, I, uh, my, my father wasn't happy with that decision at all, to take up fine arts. But my mom always encouraged me. She said, you know, just follow your heart. You know? And uh, it's very important that whatever you do in life, you need to enjoy doing it. It's, it should be a, comes from a passion. And so that's when I decided to take up design. Being Chinese, um, growing up listening to your father talk at the dining table, it was always common sense, you know, it was always, I think a Chinese um, always simplifies things, you know, thinks with his head. And that's my, that was my approach in everything I did, even, even in school, you know, there was a very creative side of it, but always a very pragmatic, you know, how do I execute this job in the fastest way, cheapest way possible, there was always that, always thinking about my future, about, you know, so I think that an industrial design, I think, is a perfect course because it melds both the art and the commercial worlds, you know. Uh, well, growing up in the Philippines, you know, I think that we are, as you all know, the cliche that we are a mixture of different cultures and all the more in our family because uh, I grew up in a Chinese family. And then when I went to um, study in America and subsequently studied in Europe, I think I got to know the whole world. You know? And every design of mine has a world outlook. Although it's rooted in tradition, in that the hand craftsmanship that I use comes from the Philippines. It's done by skilled artisans from here. A lot of the ideas around it come from my upbringing, which would include both, it's a mixture both of East and West. I came back for personal reasons. My father passed away. I had to come over, um, take over his businesses, close some, um, open some, develop um, some of them. Um, but I think in hindsight, if I stayed in Europe or the United States, I wouldn't be able to make, to create this brand. When it came to making furniture in Asia, there was no China, there was no Vietnam then. You know, the Philippines was a major player in manufacturing. And so companies here would make designs, manufacture it, only to be sold in different brands. Um, there was a lot of original design going on, but they were lost. You know, they would be labeled under a different name in Europe, in the United States, and even from state to state. You know, brands would just take up your design. You know. And now a lot of that market has gone to China because we were nameless, we were faceless. You know, no one really knew. Um, that it came from the Philippines. So it was very difficult in the beginning because when I made my own designs, I wanted to put my name on it, which was unheard of. I knew I was onto something that was very unique, that was personal, that was mine, and I wanted to put my stamp on it. It was made in the Philippines. Uh, I didn't want anyone taking um, a necessary credit for it. And so because of that, a lot of companies refused to buy from me. So for about Two years, the factory floors were empty. It was very difficult because my mom and uh, dad then were looking at me and saying, what are you doing? You know? And I had to really, um, again, follow my heart you know, to always believe in that conviction that Filipino design must take its rightful place in the world.
my designs were Filipino because it was a combination of meticulous hand craftsmanship that can only be done here in our country. It was made of natural materials and the design was very, very unique. And the Filipino then was second to none when it came to design coming from Asia. In 1998, 1999, um, I was invited by the Philippine government to be part of a group of designers called Movement 8. This was set by uh, Saitem under the late Eli Pinto and uh, Buji Layug. We went all around the world. And there I met a whole different group of buyers and clientele who used to only buy from Europe, who respected design, who respected the designer. There was none of this commercial stuff. And when I, I met them, I knew that there was another world that I wanted to go to, another world. Um, this group of clientele never bought from the Philippines before, but we're starting to do so. And so with this, I saw the whole potential of Filipino design right before my eyes. Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart. Hashtag Beyond Borders is brought to you by... Cardinal Santos Medical Center. Evergreen Cereal. AgriPro Premier Nutrition Inc. Global Diesel and GU Engineering. Nation Paper Products and Printing Corporation. Ford Tractor Philippines, your long-term agriculture partner. Japan Parts Trading Center. Dash Cargo, propelling possibilities. For your copying and printing needs, it must be sharp. Radisson Blue Cebu. Philippine Sip Yok Song Lim Musical Federation Association. Chua Beng Tang. Alejandro Ko. Jimmy C. Nang Family, Enrique Chua, Lee Poi Chin, Albert Ko, Stephen Sia, Rosalina Yasai, Anson Tan, Sherwin Choi. Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart. My mom was a very, was quite a well-known designer actually, who invented a new technique of working with rattan, and she was the toast of Philippine design uh, during her time. And that was always because her designs always showed emotion. It was very different during that time. Um, there was so much money to be made making uh, reproduction furniture and traditional furniture um, to go with the flow, but she was always trying to create something very different, and that I got from her. My mom would always help me to work on a design, especially during our early years. You know, she was always there uh, for me to critique, to look at my work, and I guess when she saw that I had my own wings, she let me uh, fly alone. I've always wanted to make a sofa that looks like a leaf, but I never knew how to do it right until uh, now. So this is literally like a giant leaf. It's, it's quite plush. It's made out of plush velvet. It's quite comfortable. And this is the side chair. And the uh, tables here are called a uh, pebble, and they're made out of different um, wood finishes. And it, they round off this collection nicely. I've been asked many times, which is more important, form or function, right? And in the real world, you can't live without the other. As an artist, your first responsibility to the world is one of beauty. I always try to create something that's very different, something unique, something that that's appeals to your heart. And then after that, I make it comfortable, I make it sellable, then I think of other things. Because if I start thinking about these other things in the beginning, I won't be able to create something really different, something that, that's 
you know, really um, that comes from the heart. This is one of my favorites, and, and uh, it's a showstopper. It's called uh, Limbo. This is called the Limbo Chandelier. This is a collection of about four different life-size figures made out of uh, copper wire. So my first design was actually the yin and yang. And this was my first, I think, breakthrough design. It was a very simple, very cubic structure that was open, that was transparent. This became the first design in a long uh, line of uh, collections using this same um, principle. The next designs were like the balu, um, which was inspired by a basket, you know, growing up. Um, I would walk through the markets in Cebu and see all these beautiful baskets and saw how the structure was so simple and yet beautiful. The voyage bed, which was very popular, was used by Brad Pitt. It's in the uh, music video of Mar Maroon 5. Um, to me, when you sleep, you take a voyage to a world of dreams and then come back the next morning. Every piece of mine tells a story. Everybody knows. I see, <laughs> I see my designs um, everywhere on the road, up to Tagaytay, um, you know, everywhere on the roadside, and uh, I laugh about it sometimes. And I think it goes with the territory. When you're a pioneer, when you try to do something unique and successful, and people follow you. you know, I mean, um, it it saddens me because it's taking away the, the jobs of many Filipinos. It's really a blow to our creative industry because a lot of thought, a lot of resources, a lot of cost went into developing this product. Um, and uh, I, I understand, you know, um, when you're trying to develop a new aesthetic, people will follow. And I've gone, you know, after them. And I still have a lot of cases pending in court, which we still pursue. And we will pursue them, um, not only for myself, but for the whole creative industry. And, uh, but what I always say to fellow Filipino designers is to always try to move on, to try to develop the next thing. I don't know if I would be able to create this brand and be where I am if it weren't in part because of my uh, Chinoy upbringing. You know? Again, this, this mix of, of, of business, of your head, is there in, in everything that I do. Um, and that's, I think, the difference between art and design. In design, you have to sell. And you have to start thinking about where your product is going to, who's going to use it, right from the very beginning. And it's not a sellout. And I guess if I were an artist, I would feel guilty, you know, to even have a bit of, to even think about being commercial. But I guess I'm Chinoy, business runs in my blood. I make these things to sell. I mean, it goes, it's going to be used by an actual person. So it's again, that mix always of heart and head. And this has to be in the product. inspires me in many ways you know? and because um, we always used to go to the beach on weekends so it was always the sea um, we had the mountains right behind us everything was very close by it was very provincial I would say it still is in many ways and um, we are relationships are, are very important for us so and I think more important is hope Cebu is home to the craftsmen who can build and who can make and transform my ideas into reality every day. You have to understand that here in the Philippines, like in the rest of the world, traditional artisan skills are dying. The average age of our artisan is about 50 to 60 years old. 
their kids don't want to be working with their hands anymore. Their goal is to send them to college so that they can work in offices and call centers and go abroad. It's very important that these artisans have a means of living. And you see that around the world. The Swiss have their um, watchmakers, you know, the French and the Italian um, industry, the fashion industry have their bag makers and they're very proud of it. And we have to develop and protect our industry. So my wish is for the next generation of designers to continue producing designs so that artisans can continue making them and living off. I think we are the only truly Filipino luxury brand in the world today. It's never enough. So people always ask me how I feel and I feel that there's still so much to be done in order to stand alongside our European counterparts. And I don't think that will happen in my generation I hope it will happen in the next generation. But my desire is for other designers to continue to create more brands from the Philippines. We need more Filipino global brands to shout out to the world that Filipino design is here to stay. I've been asked up two questions. First, how can ordinary Filipinos afford my furniture? And I say, that day will come when I stop producing the Philippines and have it made in China. Because you know, that's the only place. Everything that you find in everyone's home is today made in China, right? But I choose to remain in the Philippines with its high cost, with its high labor and manpower. Uh, there is no other way. And the second one I'm always asked is, what have I done for it? the country for fellow Filipinos. So I've done two things because I can't make my furniture or things that I do accessible to everyone. I go back and give back by designing, trying to design and consult on public spaces like uh, Naga Park, the airport, you know. What's very close to my heart is actually education. And I've co-founded the industrial design program at the University of the Philippines here in Cebu. I used to be chair and consultant of the College of St. Benil, the industrial design department. So education is very close to my heart because I believe that the next generation of designers will shape the industry and the future of our country. Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart. Hashtag Beyond Borders is brought to you by Cardinal Santos Medical Center. Ever Belena. PG Flex Linoleum and Maruyama Tarpaulin. Evergreen Cereal. AgriPro Premier Nutrition Inc. Global Diesel and GU Engineering. Nation Paper Products and Printing Corporation. Ford Tractor Philippines, your long-term agriculture partner. Japan Parts Trading Center. Dash Cargo, propelling possibilities. Phil Flex Wires and Cables. Chua Beng Tang. Alejandro Ko. Jimmy C. Nung Family. Albert Cole, Stephen Sia, Rosalina Yasai, Li Hongming. Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart. Coming from the Philippines is really difficult abroad because uh, it's always an identity crisis, you know, when I would say, um, you know, I'm, I'm Filipino and fellow Filipinos um, never look at me as if I were one of them because I'm, I'm Chinese, you know? when in fact, I think most Chinois are actually more Filipino than Chinese. You know? The first thing that people would always judge you about is how you look, your appearance. And it's really sad, you know, like, no one could guess it's I'm a Chinoy. <laughs> and 
I would tell them I'm Chinese Filipino. Yeah, it's actually very nice because they would also get intrigued by it. They would find it interesting. Like, oh, wow, like, wow, Chinese Filipino, like, what a beautiful mix, right? Like, and they, it, it, it builds up awareness, you know. There are this, there is this community that exists. <laughs> The time when I felt like um, I was in between worlds was when my family and I migrated to Canada. That's where I really saw the disparity and how people look at you and how people treat you based on the color of your skin. So when I assimilated um, into more of a Western perspective and way of life, uh, I thought I'd be happy, but you know, there was always something missing until I started to explore my roots, my Asian roots. That's when I realized that's what I was trying to deny myself. And as soon as I started to mingle and interact more with people that are Asians, especially Filipinos and Chinese, and a lot of them became my friends even until today. That's when I started to become more whole. Modern Chinoy to me is a combination of uh, mind and heart. He is a person who has a very, um, who is rooted in his tradition, in history, who understands it, and yet is very global in his outlook. Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart. Hashtag Beyond Borders was brought to you by Doña Maria Brown Rice, My Kind of Rice, from SL Agritech. BA Securities, your trading partner in Asia Pacific. Dash Cargo, propelling possibilities.